Hey guys, Colorado Camper Man Brian here. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing an install of this Renji 100 watt solar panel. So I'll put all the specs in the video right now. So if you want to check that out, pause it. I'll also put a link to where I purchased this on Renji's website and where you can buy it on Amazon as well too. So I am going to be adding this to an existing solar system that is set up on my mother-in-law's camper. So about two years ago, I installed a 100 watt uh, solar panel on their camper. It's a Windy Nation. And honestly, uh, if I could go back, I wish I could use Renogy because uh, we've had nothing but problems with that solar panel. We had some diodes go out. We ended up having to replace the entire panel. And while their customer service was good, uh, their product uh, is just not very good. So Renogy, we've been very satisfied with we have a solar panel briefcase for our camper and also their uh, deep cycle gel battery and we've just been so happy with that setup. Uh, Renogy did give me a little bit of a discount here to do this review so just to give you guys a heads up on that. But like I said, I'm a, a very firm believer in Renogy's products and as opposed to some of the other products that we've used out there, I think Renogy's quality is top notch. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get this baby uh, installed. All right, so here is all the tools that you will need for this project. Starting over here, you're gonna need a rag. You're gonna need some die core and a cock gun, some zip ties, a multimeter, a drill, and I did use a um, socket bit extension on here. Soldering iron, solder, socket set. I use an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter head. I also use a fixed wrench, uh, 10 millimeter. I use a screwdriver with a square head, wire cutters, stud finder, tape measure, pencil, and then a ladder to get up on your roof as well. So I'll put links uh, in the description where you can find some of these supplies on Amazon. All right, so here's all the things that I bought for this project. Obviously the solar panel did need to get 20 feet of uh, cable. Got some extra MC4 connectors, and then here's the Y connectors that you need in order to hook up multiple panels. Uh, also got some die core to get things all sealed up when we're done, and then the mounting hardware. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the brackets, but before we do that, we're gonna flip this thing over. <coughs> And you'll notice there's actually a couple different areas where you can install the brackets. So they have several mounting spots, both on the sides and then, you know, all over the place, really. So we want to hop up on the roof and take some measurements and see where exactly we're going to put this because we want to try to hit the studs uh, while we put these screws in. So I'm going to jump up on the roof and see if we can locate where the studs are. So you can see we have a lot of real estate for solar panels up here. So we're going to put it right there. There's the old panel. But we're going to put the new one just right behind it. So we want to try to see if we can locate where the studs are in there. All right, let's turn this on. Yep, it's working. All right, so we located our studs and they were 16 inches on center, which is what they should be, but it's always good to double check that. So with that measurement, we're gonna put a bracket. <clears throat> There's these three holes. I'm gonna be using the second in. And um, so as far as the hardware goes, these are 10 millimeter heads and nuts. So I have a socket as well as a fixed wrench, 10 millimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and get these things installed here. All right, just so you guys know how I'm doing this too, taking the, the bolt here, washer, put it on like this washer, block washer, and then the nut. So we got our uh, brackets installed on the solar panel. 
now we're going to go ahead and jump up on the roof and get things all laid out and get the wires cut. So a little ladder tip, actually an OSHA requirement. Make sure your ladder is three rungs above the roof line so that you can grab a hold of it as you're getting on the roof. All right, so here's how I have everything laid out. This is in place to where my studs are. Yeah, they're a little close, but I think that'll definitely help as, uh, uh, for wind resistance, since this thing is going to be mobile. Now our connections are in the refrigerator uh, vent area. So I'm going to get that taken off, and then I'll measure out how long our cables need to be. Okie dokie. Here's where our connections are. So we're going to measure out the length from the new panels wires to here because that's where we're going to put the Y connectors. The Y connectors are going to be in this little vent area. All right, so while you're doing this, it's really important to uh, do not plug this in. Measure it out and then cut it, okay? Um, <clears throat> That would be bad. I'm just gonna lightly put it, plug it in right there. Okay, so we need it to be about there. We're gonna give ourselves a little bit of extra room. So we need it to there. And boom. So that is the female. Now we are going to just do this the easy way, take the other side of our cable, so we got the male and female, measure this out so that they're even, and boom. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do, now that we have this cut, we now need to put our other male and female connectors on to these sides. One important note when you're putting these MC4 connectors on, you'll notice in the male and the female holes here, if you can see those, one of the pins is larger than the other. So you'll notice here you have one small one and one big one. So the male has a larger pin and the female has a smaller one. We're going to install the female plug on the cable with the male plug. Because all we're doing here, if you think of this like your household extension cord, we're just making, we're just extending this wire out so that we can plug things in. So we need to have a male and a female. So with this, all you're gonna do is you're gonna lay the wire in here and you could just crimp this. I'm going to solder it as well. You see my soldering iron down here warming up. But I'm gonna crimp this and then solder this wire to this pin. All right, so now that we got these babies all soldered on, and they are cooled off. These go on pretty easy. They just go down like that. So this part just screws on like that. And then this goes up and over. And just screws on just like so. So boom. All right, so what we're gonna do now is just a very simple test to ensure that our extension cords are working properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the voltage on the panel as it is right now. And as you can see, we're sitting at 18.5 volts. Hopefully you can see that. <clears throat> so now we're gonna plug in our extension cords and the voltage should read 
18.5 volts. So we got everything hooked up here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but boom, 18.5 volts. So our extension cord is working. So now we're gonna get everything all hooked up. I still have not screwed down the panel, but we're gonna get everything hooked up, make sure it's all working, and then we'll get the panel screwed on down. All right, so just to show you guys right now, we are bringing in 4.5 amps with the one panel, 4.4 amps. So I'm gonna show you guys once we hook up the second panel, show you guys what our amperage is, but it should pretty much double. All right, so now with these Y connectors, <clears throat> they're pretty straightforward how to install them in the aspect that really there's only one way to install them. So for this connector, you're going to take both of the males on each of the panels and just plug it in. Because see, this is going from a male to female, but then it comes out on the other end a male. So boom, there's our first Y connector. <clears throat> Second one. Again, we got two females here. We have a female coming out on this end. Just plugging it in like so. And then again, <clears throat> really this can only go one way. <laughs> so we got the female here, male here, and boom, boom. So now we have both of our solar panels hooked up. So now I'm gonna jump back inside and we're gonna look at the charge controller and see what our amperage is now reading. All right, so we're down at the charge controller and we are actually only bringing in 2.1 amps. Uh, the reason is, is because uh, after we hooked up the second panel, the battery got to its full capacity. So it's at 14 volts as of right now. Um, we are at 14 volts as you can see here. So, um, this charge controller will cut off the amperage coming in uh, unless you have some type of load or something. So I did turn the load on because I want to see the amps coming in on this thing. So we have this power inverter here and we're going to see if we put a load on in this, this is an egg beater. <laughs> it's 1.8 amps, so it's about 200 watts. We're going to see what uh, what the amps are coming in because then it should pull the full amps coming in once we turn this on. So let's give her a whirl. It's gonna get loud. Oh yeah, there she goes. She's climbing. Nice, 9.9 .9 amps. That is awesome. 9.9. So you can see again as we turn it off, the charge controller says, okay, well, we don't need to juice up our battery anymore because it's full, so we're going to reduce the amount of amps coming in. If we go back to our battery, it's still sitting at 14 volts. So that's pretty sweet. We can run almost 200 watts of power and, um, I mean, continuously, and our battery is going to stay charged. That's pretty sweet. All right, so now that we know everything's working, all we gotta do now is set our panel and screw it in. So we're gonna take our die core here, and I just like to put it, oh my gosh, that's hot. Holy smokes, that's hot. It's 100 degrees out today, so <clears throat> definitely not the best of days to do this. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna put some uh, die core underneath. down boom all right so this is the finished product and see we got everything all decored up <clears throat> got everything all in line there's the old panel you can just see the size difference it's crazy I really like the energy and like I said there's plenty of real estate to put more but man <clears throat> with 200 watts 
Plus they have one of the 200 amp hour deep cycle batteries by Renji as well. I mean, they got power forever. So now what I, all I'm gonna do is just put some zip ties on these cords and get this cap on and I will be done. All right, so there she looks all done. Cables running in. Got these cables zip tied up to. That looks good. All right, guys, well, that does it for this video on how to install the Renji 100 watt uh, solar panel on your camper. Want to give a special thanks to Renji again for hooking us up with a discount on this, and thank you guys for checking out this video. So, throw a like if you guys enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I look forward to seeing it in the next video.